Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com and in this After Effects tutorial we are going to create the impact of something stamping into your background. Now that impact needs to shake everything that is already on that background, so we're going to be using an expression and a null object to drive this entire thing. So let's get into After Effects and get stamping. So the first thing you want to do is create a new composition. So we can call it whatever we'd like. Comp one is fine and whatever settings you use for your composition don't really matter. Now I used a complicated stamp for mine. I used, uh, you know, it's this delightful mixture of text and stars and all sorts of things, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what that is. So for the one that we're going to make, so we can get into the meat and potatoes of this thing, I'm just going to create a circle. So I'm just going to go up here to the ellipse tool, double click on that. Great. Here's an ellipse. Let's make it into a proper circle. It's like 250 by 250. Okay. That is cool. And it should have some kind of detail to it. So I'm going to add to this a poly star and then I'm going to add to this a merge paths and that merge paths is going to be a subtract. It's just so we can kind of see if this thing is rotating, moving, etc. Now I'm going to also need a solid. You can create a new solid. I'm going to just drag one out. Okay, good. And now I'm going to change this to be white instead of red. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make everything on here 3D. And now I'm going to create a new null object, make that 3D too. And I'm going to parent both of these to that null object. All right. So whenever you move the null object around, everything else moves as well. So the first thing to do is have this fall down and crash into this thing. So we are going to mess with this thing's uh, sort of their transform and then position. And we're also going to screw around with the rotation. So just the Z rotation, which is around that central axis. So uh, we know that the position and rotation that we want it to end on is going to be right here, just like this. So it's going to end here and you know, it can be rotated a little bit in this direction. All right. And now we're going to go back 10 frames. And at this point, I want it rotated a little bit off axis in the other direction. And we're going to have the position of it come right through the camera. So it's going to go from here to there. And now I'm going to easy ease the first part of this, but uh, definitely not the landing. It needs to have a hard landing. So blam. And in fact, you could go ahead, grab these handles, and you could even sort of sort of pull it to be even more extreme. Just like that. Bam. So it snaps at the end. I think that's perfect. Now on this null object, I'm going to add to this a slider control. All right. And the reason for this slider control will become apparent in a moment. But we're going to set keyframes for that slider control. And the keyframes are going to be zero. And then it's going to be at something like 25, 50, some number. And then it's going to be back down to zero. And this is going to power the disruption of being hit with something. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my Google and I'm going to do a quick search for an inertia script. So I'm going to just type in inertial bounce after effects. And there are two that are great, Gray Machine and the Motion Graphics Exchange. I prefer the Gray Machine one myself. Check them both out. But, uh, you know, Gray Machine has this great thing here. You just select this, you copy it, you go back into After Effects, you Alt click on the stopwatch, and then you paste it here. I could get into what all of this means, but I mean, the big thing to take away 
from what you're looking at here is that someone else has done a lot of work so you don't have to. Essentially, you can alter things like the amplitude, the frequency, the decay, uh, all of those numbers are set up for you. And I mean, the expression doesn't have that much going on in it. And uh, if you really wanna dissect it, then uh, go right ahead. But all we need to know is that it takes the values that we've put in and what it's going to do is we can look at this on a graph. Now I'll go to the graph editor. It's essentially turning this into a sine wave that is going to then be used to decay, get smaller, and as it goes on, return to a state of normalcy. So we're going to then use this slider control to power the position a little bit of rotation, and uh, that should be good. So we go here into the position, and we're gonna give it an expression by holding down Alt and clicking on the stopwatch, and it is going to be wiggle, and we're gonna wiggle one times a second, and then comma, and I want it to wiggle as much as that slider, all right? So what happens is, when this comes down, then it starts moving all over the place, all right? Now I'd also like to have the Z rotation do something similar, so I'm gonna copy that expression, put it down there, but I'm going to multiply that by 0.1, all right? So not, not as crazy, so you know, just rotates a little bit around. Now, the other thing that I wanna do is change the slider control and call up the expression on it so that I can change things like the amplitude, the frequency, and the decay. So if we uh, increase the decay, you can see that uh, it gets a little bit more controlled and decays a little bit faster, so that's good. And uh, the frequency, let's see, we put that to one, see if that looks any better. Mm, yeah, I think I wanna put it up, put it up at four too. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so there we go. And like I said, you can observe how all of this interacts with your new thing here by just looking at the graph that it's creating and you can see, you know, when it runs down. So let's uh, take a look at what we've created so far. This thing comes down, crashes, and then starts to go crazy. All right. So you just want to make sure that the timing makes sense. So for us, I think we're off by a little bit. So there we go, just off by one frame. So there we go, so it comes down, crashes, and then everything bounces around. Now, why are we doing it this way instead of moving a camera? Well, the camera isn't what is moving. What's moving are these things. So in the intro, I put a HLS noise on here so you could kind of see what was happening. So let's put a noise HLS on this as well. And let's make it noisy so it has some texture when it moves around. And then uh, what you want to do is basically find when it is at its most extreme uh, variation and scale up your background so that it never goes out beyond the bounds, unless that's, that's what you want, in which case go crazy. And now if you start to put other things on here, then uh, it just, it just kind of fits in. So for example, I'm going to type out some text, it just says impact, right? And now if you make this 3D, stick it to the null object, it's going to look like it's always there, and then this thing comes down and impacts with what it's hanging out on. So that is a pretty cool thing to do. And, uh, you know, if you want the background to show through, then you'll want to uh, just adjust the opacity on this and stuff. But, uh, you know, that's a bunch of other things that don't have anything to do with uh, this. So what you've got is a stamp coming down, impacting and uh, really bring in the heat. If you wanna make it more realistic, often the problem is a disconnect between the expected speed at which something is hitting with and the sort of reaction. So you really wanna have those numbers that you used in that expression and the speed at which uh, this thing is basically coming down 
you want to have those match up correctly. So, you know, maybe it has to go a little bit slower. So this needs to be moved away. Maybe these numbers need to be tweaked a little bit just for the, the heaviness of how things go. Uh, maybe even this number here it doesn't need to be 50. It should be 25. Okay. So kind of like that. So if that is, uh, you know, if that's clear enough for you, then I guess we're done here. So this has been Evan Abrams showing you how to make things impact on each other using the Gray Machine Inertia Bounce script. It's not just about bouncing, it's about creating that sine wave, and it is pretty great. If you want to learn more about After Effects and other programs, check out the blog on uh, premiumbeat.com. There's some rad stuff there from not only myself, but other experts in their chosen fields. And of course, come to Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. Like, uh, I got a bunch of those. I think you really enjoy them. Anyway, if you want to see more of my stuff, check out my tutorials channel on YouTube. It's uh, E.C. Abrams on there. If you want to ask me questions about After Effects or, you know, just want to chat After Effects, uh, check me out on the Twitter at E.C. Abrams on there. And stop by EvanAbrams.com to see other things that I do if you're interested in that. If not, that's cool too. Anyway, subscribe to Premium Beat on Vimeo, on YouTube, in all of its channels. And I'll see you around next time. Thanks again and have a nice day.